What's happening, fish and friends? My name is Devin from Debo's Fishing, and you're watching a cool cat, the Bass Geek. Speaking of, I probably better get off so I can go check out the latest Bass Geek. Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're going to do a deep dive into 2D sonar, how it actually works as part of an advanced series on graphs. Okay, so the good news is this is really going to be a series about 2D sonar. It's going to be about all the graphs. We're going to start with 2D sonar. We're going to move to down imaging. We're going to move to side imaging. We're going to talk to you about how all that relates. We'll, we may even do a video on the GPS portion. And we're going then in the end, we'll kind of combine all that together and how it all works together. Now, this isn't a settings video. We're not going to talk about settings. We're going to talk about general 2D sonar and the theory of 2D sonar, how it actually works so that you can better understand what you're actually seeing on the bottom. Now, like I said, this is going to translate to anything that is the cheapest unit you can buy to the most expensive units you can buy. These will all work because we're talking about the theory of 2D sonar and how those frequencies actually work. And that's pretty much standard across the board. So the very first thing we're gonna start talking about is going to be the business end of the sonar, which is the transducer. Now we're gonna talk about strictly the 2D version. So a 2D version of a transducer the good thing about it is it can really come in any shape and there's actually not a front or back. Now, a transducer like the one you're seeing right here is called a skimmer and that's actually designed to be mounted on the back of the boat and it's actually mounted to come through the water better. But you can actually, they can actually come in all different shapes and sizes, round, uh, which will go on the trolling motor. The good thing about it is is because of the cone angle, and we'll talk a lot more about cone angle a little bit later, because the cone angle is round at the bottom. So it's not oval, it's not a straight line, it's not a square, because it's round, it really doesn't matter which direction the transducer heads, as long as it's only, and again, only a two, D sonar transducer. So now, inside that transducer, what you have is actually a crystal. Yeah, believe it or not, most of this stuff actually works on crystal magic. No, I'm kidding, it's not magic. What happens is, is there may be one, two, depending on the frequencies, it may be one crystal, that they apply different amounts of charge to, which causes that crystal to vibrate at different frequencies. Now, we're gonna talk about the most common frequencies for us bass anglers, and that is the 83 and the 200 frequency range, okay? So the 83 and the 200 frequency range, these are considered, and what sonar actually uses, is sound waves. Well, these are ultrasonic sound waves, which means they're outside or above what humans can actually hear. Now, how does it work? Well, when you get a charge applied to that crystal, the crystal vibrates, sending those vibrations into the water, a lot like ripples on the surface of the water. If you drop your bait in and you get ripples. But now here's the thing, these are actually pushed out in a direction, okay? So they're focused. So much like you taking a uh, megaphone, yelling through that megaphone, directing your voice so it's louder, but it's directed to a certain area. And that's the same way the sound waves travel toward the bottom of the lake. Again, they are waves. So now when we talk about frequency, the higher the frequency, the less water penetration, so the less depth. And in side imaging, the less you're gonna be able to see the less distance to each side. Now, 
there's another and probably more important than depth range because let's face it guys again we're bass anglers 83 i don't remember the exact range but i think it's like well over 200 maybe three maybe even 500 feet that you can see that it'll penetrate 200 is the same way now we're also not going to talk about chirp that will be a completely other video uh, we may touch on it in the wrap up probably but uh chirp is a little different it uses multiple frequencies just to give you a, a, an idea of what it actually does but right now we're going to focus on the basis the basics of 2d sonar which is 83 and uh 200 the 83 200 now basically what those sound waves do so when they admit when they emit a sound wave and it goes down what it'll do is hit either the bottom or, or cover grass rock whatever and it'll bounce back now that's going to be displayed on your unit as different things and again i'll kind of show you some of that here in just a minute but that being said so it reflects back when it hits fish that's what arches look like now here's the thing you really need to remember about your 2d sonar remember how we said your 2d sonar runs out into a cone well the cone angle is extremely important because you're seeing a lot more of the bottom than i think most of you guys realize so when you hear me talking about 80 and 200, it's really frequencies, it's sound frequencies. So it's kind of just like a, a radio. You have different frequencies for different stations. Same sort of concept here. So 83 is, is an 83 kilohertz frequency. 200 is a 200 kilohertz frequency. Now don't overthink that the whole frequency thing. It's just, again, imagine that it's different channels and each one performs a different way. Now that brings us back to cones. And this is the big thing about the frequencies is the cone angles or the angle by which the frequency begins to spread as it goes deeper and deeper. Now, the 83 frequency actually spreads at a 60 degree spread as it goes deeper and deeper. And the 200 spreads at about a 20 degree spread as it goes down. So as an angler, the cone angle is really important. I really want you guys to pay close attention to this part. Everything else is just theory and how it works and mechanics, but it doesn't help you find, understand where the fish are located below you, okay? This part does. So the 83 kilohertz frequency actually, and, and if you do the math on this, and I've, I've done the math for you, don't worry, it is roughly one to one. So one foot down, one foot visibil visibility, I can't seem to talk. But if you're 20 foot down, you're now seeing 20 foot from left to right or front to back in that cone. So that means you're seeing 10 foot ahead, 10 foot behind, 10 to the left, 10 to the right. You got that? If you're in 30, you're seeing 15 to the front, 15 to the back, 15 to the side, 15 to the other side. Now 200 megahertz, sorry, 200 kilohertz, it is roughly a, what I call three to one. So every three foot down, you're seeing one foot section, okay? If you're in you know, nine feet of water, you're seeing a three foot section of the bottom. Now, here's a key to that. Seeing that three foot section, you're seeing three foot completely across that cone angle from left to right, three foot from front to back. So if you're standing on the front of your boat and you're seeing three foot of section, it's really a foot and a half forward, a foot and a half back, a foot and a half to each side of the transducer, okay? So if you're in 15 feet, you're, you're seeing a five foot section, okay? So that five foot section, you're now seeing 
two and a half feet forward, two and a half feet back, two and a half feet to the side, left, two and a half feet to the right. So two and a half feet in any direction from the center, which is your transducer. Now, that's a little weird because you're only seeing that translated to a 2D picture. But that's the biggest key is knowing those cone angles on that 2D frequency, that sonar, standard sonar, knowing that cone angle. Now, all that being said, let's jump down here. I'm gonna show you some fish and I'm gonna talk to you about what we're looking at and about what they look at as they pass through the cone. Okay, so I wanna show you right off the bat the frequencies. Now this is 75 through 95. You remember me talking about chirp? Chirp takes that 83 and expands it. So that's what you're seeing there. Same here, 175 to 220, it takes that 200 frequency and expands it. So you get multiple, multiple uh, frequencies, which gives you a better picture. Now you see, we got good arches here. There's some fish sitting out here on a ledge. Now you'll notice this arch right here, okay? This arch, the thing of it is, is I am running, since you see both frequencies, I'm running this in dual frequency, which means when they're under the boat, which you can see right here, you're gonna get a stronger return. When they're slightly outside, you're gonna get half arches or maybe just a little bit of clutter. Now, all this stuff down here is just a thermocline. You can see again, you kind of get a half arch. That fish may be pointed or just outside that primary beam. It could be just outside or it could be traveling across the boat so so you'll get half arches depending on which way the fish are traveling if they're crossing the beam left to right or if they're cross you know if they're uh headed straight toward you you'll get a smaller arch because they're coming one way you're coming another so you don't get a big long arch if they're swimming right underneath you you can even get a line now here this is probably a fish right here and right here but the thing i want you to note is that they're probably outside the beam. Now look at this group of fish. This is a group of fish right here. They're all grouped up. There's one on the bottom, two on the bottom. There's probably something like eight or nine fish in there. And we're in 20 foot. So we're actually seeing a 20 foot section of the bottom. Again, here's some half arches. Now those half arches are probably farther away, but look at these. These are nice and solid, big arches, good color in them. And that's another way you can tell how big the fish are, but not always. Again, if these arches are outside or farther away from the center of the cone, they're gonna appear smaller. So just remember that. Okay, so a couple things that I left out. Let's talk about those cone angles again. So let's say you're running at 83, one of the things that you will actually have to remember is that based on the level you're seeing the fish, you can also discern how close to the transducer they are. So let's say you're in 20 feet, but the fish are suspended up in 10. Well, you're only seeing a 10 foot cross section. So they're not gonna be 20 foot out, they're only gonna be 10. So the higher they are in the water, the closer to the transducer, they're gonna be both vertically and horizontally. So that's something else you wanna remember. The same goes with the 200. Now, as you've seen in the video, there were a couple of half arches. You'll see them right here, a couple of half arches. Generally what that is, those two arches, they probably were sitting there swimming at about, you know, or suspended. And as the boat come over, they left the cone. So the visibility of the cone. Now, one of the things you'll also see, I run dual beam. And what that basically means is that, again, fish directly under the boat are gonna show up a lot stronger returns, which means the stronger returns are more likely in that 200 beam, and you're gonna get a little more separation most of the time. All right, so, 
I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope this is going to help you out. We're real, like I said, we're really going to deep dive. If you got any more questions about 2D sonar, we're going to do side imaging, down imaging. We're going to do a single video for everything, and then we're going to tie everything together and how I choose to use each one while I'm looking for fish, whether it be on the console or whether it be on the uh, bow of the boat. So like I said, any questions about 2D, any questions about anything that is strictly sonar, put them in the comment section below. As I always say, I love to talk fishing with you guys. I love to talk about this stuff. It's a, it's a passion of mine, being a computer geek. Uh, you know, I feel like I know because I, I watch a lot of YouTube channels, I watch a lot of people talk about this sort of stuff, and some of the guys that talk about it that seems like everybody wants to go talk to get a lot of stuff wrong. So give me, you know, drop those comments down there. Um, this works even, this, this theory that what we're doing is even gonna work if you're using like the deeper, the, the foam stuff, it's the same exact thing. Now, the one thing that may change is some of the angles, pretty much the 83 and the uh, 200 are pretty much standard, but now you go to Lowrance or you go to Garmin and the angles are gonna change ever so slightly, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. You can, you can round up or down just a little bit so that it gives you a precise location of those fish. Now, like I said, I will be using mostly the hummingbird angles because that's what I'm using right now. But all that being said, let me start over. Questions, comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about fishing with you. And like I said, this is one of the passions that I have. Being a computer guy for 20 plus years, 20 years, I feel like I've got a pretty solid bead on how these things work. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell so you get the notifications. You can watch these. Don't miss a Bass Geek episode pretty please. And as always, you guys rock.